Some California school districts experimenting with a new way to keep kids in the classroom. Why not everyone is in love with modified quarantine? A major problem keeping San Diego's pools open as we deal with another sweltering heat wave. And San Diego's fire chief has serious concerns about the city's new ambulance provider. ABC 10 News at 6 starts now. San Diego's police chief is reacting to a recent survey showing hundreds of his officers are willing to leave the department rather than be forced to get vaccinated. Good evening. I'm Kimberly Hunt. And I'm Steve Atkinson. Our ABC 10 News reporter Rachel Bianco is live with Chief David Nislight's concerns tonight. Rachel. Steve, the chief says the officers here at the Eastern Division and the other eight divisions across the city are doing their best to keep up with an increase in call volume. He says the last thing the department needs is to lose officers. San Diego's police chief called a news conference Monday to address the city's increase in violent crime. But those aren't the only numbers on the mind of Chief David Nislight. That's concerning. I mean, the, the possible impacts if, uh, you know, if we were to lose officers. The city and the San Diego Police Officers Association are still trying to come to an agreement regarding the city's vaccine mandate announced earlier this month. Roughly 733 officers responded to a recent survey. Around 90% said vaccines should be an individual choice. Roughly 300 said they'd rather be fired than comply with a vaccine mandate. But even if it's a quarter of that number, you're talking 75 or 80 officers, that's, um, that's a lot. Um, and and they, they could very easily go to other places, um, like I said before. So um, it's, it's, uh, it's concerning for sure. Union President Jack Schaefer recently told 10 News he hopes the city offers choices like routine testing for those who don't want the vaccine. Just something that makes, you know, that it isn't so, so super punitive um, that that it drives people away. I, that's that's just what I, I don't want to see. I definitely want people to be safe. The city is already short 94 officers. The goal is to bring on 200 more each year. You know, you look at this police department, uh, our ratio to officers to citizens is the second lowest in this nation. And so obviously that impacts our ability to respond to crime. And he says they're responding to at least 25,000 calls per week. The chief says officers hear the same complaint. Not, a, not enough cops. They want to see more cops. Initially, the city gave a November 2nd deadline for employees to get vaccinated. That date has been pushed back to late November or early December. The city and the union were supposed to meet last week, but the city canceled that meeting. The mayor's office says there is no estimate on when a decision might be made. Reporting live in Sarah Mesa, Rachel Bianco, ABC 10 News. Thank you, Rachel. And the county reported another 12 COVID-related deaths today while our daily cases remained well below 1,000. Our seven-day test positivity rate fell to 3.6%. California continues to have the lowest rate of COVID transmission in all 50 states. CDC data shows that we are the only state with substantial community transmission rather than high. And we average 95 cases per 100,000 residents. That's just under 70% of Californians currently vaccinated. So I think it's a reflection that the state and county governments have done a good job of getting the message out and implementing restrictions when they were needed. The county's own case rate tracker shows the majority of the region with a high transmission rate with substantial and moderate transmission in some areas. Meantime, health experts say that now is a good time to get the flu shot. Pediatricians recommend adults and children older than six months should get the shot by Halloween, regardless of what flu season is like. The CDC also says on its website that everyone should get the shot by the end of October. Doctors say this is especially important for young people who are not yet eligible for the COVID-19 vaccine. Firefighters made quick work of a small brush fire in the Miramar area. A 10 News viewer captured the flames early this afternoon in a patch of land off Nobel near the 805. It's actually part of MCAS Miramar. The fire was held to a half acre, no structures burned. The cause is being investigated, but there was a homeless camp in the area. And our hot weather makes any fire extra dangerous. Meteorologist Angelica Campos is joining us now with a look at the places that set records on this last day of summer, Angelica. 
Hi, Kim, that's right. San Ana winds are going to make the fire danger critical for the next couple of days. And it's also making temperatures reach up to 10 to 15 degrees above normal. Today in Cintia, 104 degrees, 103 in Escondido Valley Center, 102. A lot of places reaching over 100. The areas that broke records include Vista Ramona and Alpine. We had two ties, but in Alpine, they actually broke the record of 97 from 2009. And the heat advisory will remain in effect for another day until 8 p.m. tomorrow evening. Once again, expecting temperatures between 95 to up to 104 degrees like today. There's also a chance for emotional thunderstorms. We're going to keep an eye on the fire danger. We'll have much more in your seven day forecast. A customs warehouse in Otay Mesa is being ordered to pay back wages and fines for paying its workers below minimum wage. The Labor Department says that Primar Global Warehouse Logistics paid 16 Mexican nationals as little as 338 an hour. The company also did not pay overtime and paid the workers in pesos. A judge ordered Primar to pay $235,000 in back wages and get trained on the requirements of the Fair Labor Standards Act. Some California uh, school districts, they were experimenting with a new approach to try to spare kids from long COVID quarantines. But the strategy is not endorsed by the CDC. It's called modified quarantine. Our ABC 10 News anchor Derek Stahl is going in depth to explain how it works. As of last week, San Diego Unified identified about 550 students as close contacts to someone who tested positive for COVID. Normally, that would mean about 550 empty seats with students sent home for up to 10 day quarantines. But the district was able to keep some of those kids in class with a new strategy called modified quarantine. It allows unvaccinated students to remain in school after an exposure if everyone was masked at all times when within six feet and the student can undergo testing twice a week. Vaccinated students without symptoms don't have to quarantine. It was designed to keep students in school, and I think it is doing that. District physician Dr. Howard Terrace says the modified quarantine plan created by the state is great in theory, but challenging to pull off. All school districts in San Diego County are struggling with this, so it is um, a, a bit of a logistical nightmare. We checked nine of California's largest school districts and found four do not allow these in school quarantines. Some districts like San Francisco Unified say they just don't have the staff or the systems to ensure that kids were masked at all times and that everyone gets tested when they should. Students on modified quarantine are not allowed to attend sports or other after school programs, and some districts say they just can't verify that. There is an incredible amount of vari uh, variability within California districts and then also across the country. Bree Dassault is an education researcher at the University of Washington. She says a few states have adopted even looser approaches called test to stay. Some schools allow exposed kids to stay in class even if they were unmasked as long as they undergo more frequent testing. The CDC says it does not have enough evidence to support any of these modified quarantines. Instead, it recommends unvaccinated students quarantine for up to 14 days. The caveat is that the agency gives an exemption if the school can ensure everyone was fully masked, no testing required. What's interesting is we see across the country that most districts are not following that guidance and exempting students and they are exempting vaccinated students but masks students are not exempted. Dassault says some districts think the CDC guidance just isn't feasible and some California districts may wind up sending more kids home to quarantine as a result. But as the school year stretches on, she says districts need to prepare for the possibility that kids get quarantined more than once. What worries her is that many districts haven't spelled out a plan to keep kids learning during home quarantines. San Diego has outlined its continuity of instruction plan, but Dassault's group found five of the nine large California districts they checked released no plans at all. Derek Stahl, ABC 10 News. San Diego Unified says it is trying to find ways to make modified quarantines easier on staff by working with the San Diego Supercomputer Center. They're exploring ways to use more automation to notify parents and schedule tests. And you can stay on top of any new developments with coronavirus by downloading the 10 News app. A free version is available in the App Store. 
We're getting a look at the alarming number of drug overdose deaths in San Diego County. The main culprit is fentanyl. Today, the county announced the number of overdose deaths from fentanyl has risen from 33 to 462 over the past five years. Fentanyl is very cheap to make. It's often laced into both illegal prescription pills or sold in powder form. And the deadly drug doesn't have to travel far to hit the streets of San Diego. The U.S.-Mexico border is a primary gateway for synthetic fentanyl, often disguised as other drugs. There is some good news. Experts say the research shows the majority of people will get help if it's available to them and intervention is offered early. There are updated numbers in the California governor recall election. 88% of the vote has now been counted and yes on the recall has made up a tiny bit of ground, but no is still way ahead, 63 to 37%. The race was called in Governor Gavin Newsom's favor less than an hour after the polls closed last Tuesday.